Hey guys, Charlene Ortiz here. I just wanted to do a quick, uh, I guess, little reaction to Amberlynn's video talking about quitting outpatient. Um, how, you know, she felt it wasn't the right fit for her. Um, and just like every other program, doctor, treatment plan she's tried, um, she knows better than the medical professionals that are trying to help her. Yada, yada, yada. It's always the same story. And one thing that kind of baffles me is the fact that people still have expectations from this woman. Um, I did a few videos on Amberlynn several years ago. I think the last one I did was, uh, I don't know, it may, it, it, maybe it's been three years since the last time I did a video on her. Um, but there was a, uh, maybe a four to six month period where I, I did several videos about her. And like many of us, when I first entered the Amberverse, um, I was very intrigued. I was very fascinated by her. Um, I did do my, my first video that I ever did on, on Amber Lynn. Um, I talk about, you know, how I first discovered her I, through Michael B. Petty. And just, you know, why I, I just got sucked in, you know, to her world and like all of us have. And at first, you know, of course, being a personal trainer that's worked with special populations included in that group of special populations are super morbidly obese people. So even though my last reaction to Jen was really nasty, I do have an incredible amount of compassion and empathy for people that that struggle with obesity particularly morbid obesity um but just because someone struggles with morbid obesity doesn't mean that they're horrible people um these women just happen to be uh, these women are horrible people that happen to be morbidly obese um you know our our issue with them is not their weight our issue with them is who they are as a person and their character but I was very fascinated and intrigued by Amber Lynn because I, I really had never seen anybody that was so delusional, um, that was so entitled, that was so um, narcissistic, that really saw themselves as somebody who was really hot, even though they were 600 pounds and most people um, would be repulsed by her. Um, how she would stare at herself in the viewfinder sometimes and just, you know, um, she is very full of herself. So at first I, I did have an attitude like, you know, um, this girl just needs help. This girl just needs therapy. You know, she's been through trauma in her life, blah, blah, blah. And I think in the beginning for many of us that when we initially discover Amberlynn, that's our insight that we have about her. Um, cause a lot, a lot of the clients that I've worked with over the years that suffered from, um, morbid obesity did experience some type of trauma in their life. Um, and some of them horrible trauma and it, it, you, and you understand why, um, they went to food, um, or why, why they went to any addiction, you know, to help deal with it the same way someone would go to heroin or, or crack or whatever. Um, but eventually, you know, after um, she went through, you know, a couple of her cycles, um, I just, I, I just kind of, you know, gave up on having any hope for her. And, just realize that this girl is never going to change. Um, a year from now, she'll be the same. Two years from now, she'll be the same. If not, she'll be bigger. And, uh, you know, to me, uh, after watching her um, for the time period that I did, I finally came to the conclusion she's never going to change. And so now, again, I, I watch her just purely just for entertainment. Um, and I don't get angry at her. Um, when I found out that she stopped going to outpatient, which actually I personally am one of those people that believe she never went to an outpatient. I, I don't believe she ever, there was never a program. 
I believe that she made it all up because her views were declining. Um, she, you know, she's too lazy to do the cameos, as we know recently. Um, she's dropped the ball on several cameos. I mean, that that's how fucking lazy she is. She can't even do like a five minute video telling someone happy birthday or, you know, whatever. I mean, God, how easy is that? Um, but anyway, um, you know, she's in panic mode. So I personally believe she made it all up and there was never, ever a program, you know, and, and she knew that people would tune in and, um, but. If she didn't, if her she really did go to an outpatient program, I why are people upset? Or, or for for the people that believe that she did go and maybe she did, I don't know. Why are people upset that she quit? I mean, why do people even get mad at her anymore? Like I don't understand. Like she's never going to change. You know, it's like me getting mad at my dog for barking. You know, my dog, he's a dog. He barks. That's what he does. He's never going to stop. Amber Lynn is a liar. You know, she's, uh, she's a narcissist. Or she has narcissistic tendencies. I mean, obviously, again, I'm not a psychologist. I can't diagnose her. Um, but, you know, so why, why do we um, continue to get upset and disappointed with her when we've seen her do this same song and dance a, a million times already. So for me personally, again, when it comes to Amber and Chantal, because they're not a burden on the taxpayers, because um, they're, I, I personally don't see them as being as evil and spiteful as a Jen. Because, um, uh, you know, it, 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 sh sure, Amber Lynn in her relationships with her past girlfriends, especially Becky, um, she was, you know, emotionally and mentally abusive. Um, I'm not saying that Amberlynn and Chantel haven't hurt people be with, you know, their, their, their horrible character traits. But they've never done anything like what Jen has done. You know, like, I don't see Amber, um, if she got, you know, uh, bad treatment at a hospital, suing the hospital. I, I just, I mean, I just don't see her doing that. Um, she just, I don't know, like it, it, as, as fucked up as she is, I don't see her doing a lot of the things that Jen does. Um, you know, Amber Lynn can definitely be snarky in her remarks, but it, Jen, I don't know. It's it, to me, it's just different with Jen because Jen is incredibly entitled and she feels that, you know, society owes something to her. Um, even though, um, the taxpayers you know, of, of her society are paying for her to live and to get the medical care that she gets. So when it comes to Amber, I don't get mad. Um, one thing, another thing that, uh, that baffles me that I don't understand are people that, uh, that um, continue to go to her channel and make that watch her video number one and then comment about how disappointed they are. She's never going to change, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like you realize going to her channel, watching the video on her channel and commenting on her channel allows her to continue to make money to live this lifestyle. So if you're so uh, upset and so disappointed and so, you know, whatever, why are you going to her channel and uh, uh, making it possible for her um, to have the income to spend $3,000 a month on takeout. Like that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, it, it kind of, it reminds me of, um, when my father, um, was an absent father, he abandoned us when I was 12. Um, and even when he was around, he wasn't a present father. Uh, he wasn't a good father. Um, he was an alcoholic and a drug addict and homeless for many, many years. Um, he contracted tuberculosis. Um, he developed pancreatitis because of his alcoholism. Um, sadly, um, he died um, several years ago at the age of 68 um, due to all the abuse that he had put his body through. Well, um, he left when I was 12. And then when I was 25, um, he appeared again. Um, one of my family members found him, one of my uncles did, and um, he, you know, came back. 
Um, I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area at this time, and um, I flew to Ohio uh, to go see him because uh, that's where my my family is from, Ohio. Um, that's why I lived there for uh, many years. But anyway, I went to Ohio to go see him, and even when, even though he wasn't much of a present father, when he was there, um, he and I. Um, were you know really had a, a a close connection and um that's why when he abandoned us uh, i was devastated especially you know being the tender age of 12 years old and we had just moved to a, a different state i was going to a whole new school i was um, recovering from a major surgery i had when i was 11 I had a Whipple procedure. Anybody out there in the medical field um, probably knows what that is. It is a, a major, major surgery. Uh, but I had a Whipple procedure at 11. So, you know, I was there was a lot of you know, challenges I was already um, going through at that time in my life. And then for my, my father to abandon me um, was, you know, devastating. So anyway, um, I even though, uh, um, again, he wasn't really there, I... I always felt a connection to him um so when he came back um i went to go see him and i just had this fantasy that um you know he was uh going to apologize and explain to me why he left and you know try to do everything he could to make it all right and blah 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 blah. well when i went to go see him he was in horrible shape he looked like he had aged by 30 years. And my father, um, when I was young, was a very robust, muscular, strong man. Um, you know, he was just someone that, you know, if you saw him, it wasn't somebody that you wanted to fuck with. You know, he was very handsome, um, very strong, and um, he had a presence to him. When I saw him after 12 years um, with all the drugs and the alcoholism and being homeless, um, he had uh, drastically deteriorated. And it was devastating, really sad to see. Um, well, I asked him, why did you leave? You know, why did you uh, abandon us? Especially right after I had, you know, major surgery and, you know, um, going through um, some in in really um um intense uh life changes by moving states and he said when we moved from boston because uh, i grew up in boston um he said that he would be back he would come to ohio in a month and he never came so anyway i asked him why he abandoned us and he said um i think it doesn't matter what matters is that I'm here now and we need to move on and move forward. And I was furious with that answer. Absolutely furious. So I flew back home um, uh, to the Bay Area. I specifically lived in Sil Silicon Valley. This was in the late 90s when the dot, the mid to late 90s when the dot com industry was taken off. Um, but I lived in Silicon Valley and I, um, you know, was very upset, devastated and talked to one of my roommates who was like a second mother to me about what happened. And she gave me some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. And I hold on to that advice to this day. And she said, Charlene, there are going to be many times in life where people are going to hurt you, where things are going to be unfair, where stuff is going to happen to you that doesn't make sense. And you will never get an answer why. You will never get the appropriate apology. You will never, uh, you will never get the reasoning why. You'll, you'll never get that satisfaction. You'll never get that closure. And you just need to move on. And, you know, holding on to the anger and the bitterness will only um, keep you from being able to have a fulfilling life. And... Um, once I was able to accept that my father was who he was, he wasn't going to change. And it just, that's just how it's going to be. And I let go of, of all my expectations that I had, um, for, you know, all those years that he was gone. 
um, when I let go of that fantasy of having that father-daughter relationship that I so strongly desired, when I let go of that, um, I was able to forgive him. And um, I wasn't angry at him anymore. So, and I, I know, um, I don't know, I didn't mean to go off into that tangent, to be honest with you, but um, obviously Amberlynn's not somebody that's a part of my life, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my point is that um, at some point you, you, with, with certain people, you have to reach, come, you have to come to the conclusion or the resolution, this person is never going to change. They will always be this way. And I just need to accept it. You know, um, whether it's someone like Amber Lynn, who's a complete stranger to us, or somebody who is a, 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 a that is a part of your personal life, um, there are sometimes we just have to uh, accept that this is who they are and they're not going to change. And we either accept them or we distance ourselves or we cut them out of our life. You know, whatever we need to do for us, you know, to be able to, um, you know, have be uh, take care of ourselves emotionally and mentally. So that's why when it comes to Amberlynn and Chantel, I, I don't get mad, you know, um, because they're just they're not they're, they're never going to change. Um, Amberlynn is going to end up how Jen is. Um, who knows? She might not even live as long as Jen has lived. And that's just how it is. Uh, she'll never lose weight. Um, and maybe she just doesn't care. Um, I don't know. But I did do a video. Again, it's, it was several years ago when I talked about how I feel like Amberlynn just, you know, is resolved with the fact that she's going to die young. And is just you know, enjoying life to the best of her ability to what she can do. Um, and for her, that's eating and shopping. Um, and she just maybe has come to the resolution. I, I'm going to die young. I don't care. Kind of like hungry, hungry fat chick, you know, um, she doesn't care. She knows, she knows she's destroying her body. She knows what she's doing is very destructive. Um, but she doesn't care, you know, um, she is also someone who has experienced incredible trauma. And when it comes to Amberlynn's past, my theory of, about her past is, is one of two things. Number one, it wasn't as bad as what, um, she has told us it is. And she just, you know, um, um, tells us, you know, she just tells us, uh, these stories just to for us to have some sympathy for her or it was a lot worse than what she she has told us that it was and she has buried this incredible trauma so deep that she doesn't even want to recognize that she experienced um, such extreme trauma in her life so she's never been honest with how bad it really was. That's always been my theory with her. You know, it's either not as bad as what she says or it was a lot worse than what she says. And that's why um, she continues to live her life the way that she does. So, but um, again, just like with Jen, I could care less whether she lives or dies because she could care less whether she lives or dies. So why am I going to worry about it? I don't know her. She's not part of my life. Um, you know, I don't want her to die. Um, I think it would be very sad, you know, that a wasted life. Um, and, um, you know, she could have uh, um, had an incredibly successful YouTube channel because everybody loves a, a success story. Um, I mean, look at Obese to Beast. I mean, look how many subscribers he has, you know, compared to Amber Lynn. Um, and I'm sure that I don't, I don't follow Obese to Beast, but I'm sure he sells workout programs and, you know, has other ways that he makes money from YouTube and his success and his audience. And, you know, like people just are so inspired by him. Um, Amber Lynn could have the same story and the same success and, um, you know, uh, become a, a, a millionaire. She has that potential, 
you know, um, because she has that audience, you know. But anyway, um, that's why I don't understand why people get mad at her. I think people just need to stop getting mad at her because it's a waste of your own energy. It's a waste of your own emotions because, you know, she's never going to change. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, do you think there was ever an outpatient program? I mean, are you um, in the same group that I'm in where, where you think she made it all up? Um, were you expecting that she was, um, if you believe she did go to an outpatient, which she, you know, very well could have, um, were you expecting this to be, you know, the, the final, um, solution for her to lose her weight and get her life together? Um, did you think, did you already know she was going to fail right off the bat? Well, what, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on her, this whole outpatient scenario? I'm really curious just to kind of see. Um, you know, what, what different people feel about this. So I have yet to go to the comment section of this video um, and see what people have to say, because I do like to do that. I do like to go to the, um, when she has like trivial videos like this, like her more controversial videos, um, I do like to go and see what her comment section has to say. And I, I haven't done that yet. So, all right, guys. So um, again, you know, just wanted to share my thoughts on that. So, okay, well, thanks for listening. Um, I always appreciate your time and attention. Remember, take care of yourself, protect yourself physically and emotionally, and don't forget your health is your most valuable asset. Invest in it. Bye-bye.